Hi, it's me. I'm back. Um, I thought I'd give a quick update. It's been pretty much a year since I started a game. So, um, you know, a year is a really long time. It went by pretty quick. I thought I'd give um, an update. Uh, the first part, I just want to go over the numbers. Like, what did I do? What was the success rate? What are all the shit that happened? So, um, started out in January 2011, and... Uh, I've approached nearly 2,000 sets uh, within this time frame. So basically, 40 sets a week for 50 weeks in a row, except for maybe Christmas, Thanksgiving, and like one other weekend, I went out on a date with a girl, so I didn't go out. So, you know, like, I'm literally consistent 95% of the weekends. Like, I go every Friday, I go every Saturday, I fucking go home. I write my field report, I get it analyzed, I do my fucking homework, um, you know, and that's a, that's a big number. 2,000 sets is, like, huge, right? If I kept keep this up for, like, five years, I would have, like, done 10,000 sets. Uh, and if I don't get my HP 10 by my 10,000 set, I'm going to go back to playing video games. No, um... Uh, no, so, but yeah, 2,000 sets is a really big number. Most most guys in pickup don't fucking do anywhere near 2,000 sets in a year, dude. Like, they'd be, you'd be good doing, like, fucking 500 sets, right? 2,000 is a, it's a decent number. Like, you're consistently going out every single week, at least twice a week. So, uh, with that being said, my late count before the game was 2 at age 28, and my late count late count now is 14. At age 29, almost. So basically, within a year, my late count went up 600 percent of my previous 28 years of my life. So it just shows that when you work on something, a couple hours of a week, it you I mean the results are going to come, right? Like, you go out on a mission to, you know, pull. You're going to pull maybe not 12 times a year when you first start out, but even just sheer numbers, dude, you talk to, like, 2,000 girls, one of them's going to like you. Even just fucking... Even if you're a fucking World of Warcraft, pimply-faced, pasty-ass, fat dude, uh, you'll probably, 2,000 girls, you'll find one weird enough to like you so like just and you're guaranteed to get good it's just uh, even if you didn't get good just the numbers itself will like be in your fucking favor if you were just consistent right so 12 lays uh, took me like a month and a half to get my first number uh, like two months to get my first date um, took me like four months to get my first lay so Things happen pretty fast, right? You usually when you get into pickup, there's like this threshold, right? You have to be at here to like get some success, right? If you're down here, you're hella weird. You have to like climb all the way up to here before you start seeing stuff, right? So for me, like it's like oh, been in a conversation for five minutes, you kind of notice it. It's like yeah, I'm gonna fucking keep going, right? And then it's like oh, I got the number. I'm the shit. I can see myself improving. It's like, oh, I got an insta date. I'm the fucking man. And then, you know, you got a lay. Like, when you get your lay, you know, like, what you're doing is obviously working. And, um, you know, but the sad part is most people don't go from here to here. They, like, they fucking don't hit it hard. They, they just stay home or they fucking read materials and they never go through this pain period, right? Once you, go through the pain period then it's like it's fun and excitement it's like hey you're not always you know it's not like you're always pulling every night you go out but hey you know once in a while you get a number or once in a while you get a make out or once in a while some they end up going home with you but uh but still the anticipation uh, it makes going out really fun right but for most people they don't get to that point so they quit this is like 95% of the people, they stay here. Well, fortunately, um, I had a mentor that I pretty much talked to on a weekly basis. 
um, the fact that I work out, I'm pretty witty. Like, even when I first started, like, my bantering skills were pretty decent, and I took, like, 20 weeks of improv, so uh, that really helped, right? So, um, so in terms of um, the lay count, uh, my first lay, uh, who's this Japanese girl? It took me five dates to finally get it, right? Uh, one thing I noticed about Japanese girls is they're very compliant. They're shy, but like they never say no. They're just like, basically as long as you lead, you're funny, um, they're just compliant, right? And compliance is the name of the game. A uh, second girl was a, uh, a Filipino girl who's just really down. <laughs> Um, third one was a black girl, uh, kind of interesting, um, apparently black girls love Asian guys who are really in shape. I don't know why, but, um, that's just something I noticed, I'll talk about it later, and black girls are pretty fun to talk to, if, if you're into black girls, right, they're, they're pretty aggressive, they're very open socially, so, like, when you talk to a black girl, it's very fun, it's like high energy, they're like shooting the shit. Anyways, uh, and the fourth girl is a blonde girl. I opened and we ended up talking about StarCraft and uh, it was like she was drunk. I didn't think it was going to happen or none of that. I called her the next day. It was like on and then, like the second time she came the next week it was like over. Um, another one, a Mexican girl. They're always fun too. Fifth one was like Mexican girl. Just like I think um, they were like, okay so Situational is really good, like, when I approached them, they were, like, looking into the bushes, like, trying to find somebody, right? So my opener was like, hey, uh, <coughs> what are you guys looking for? Like, is your friend stuck in the bushes? Maybe they were um, doing something naughty or whatever. So I was, like, a situational opener. Um, she was really into me as I was over. Um, six one, uh, I'm losing track. Uh, Six one, I think. Um, I went back to Seattle for my high school reunion, and uh, <laughs> this actually happened in the parking lot. Me and uh, this other wing, uh, we approached these two girls who were smoking, and uh, it's in my videos. Uh, and I was like, "Hey, hey, wing, what's a uh, what's a uh, good opener for a girl who smokes?" And he was like. Did you know that smoking increases the chance of lung cancer by 25%? I was like, fuck that, dude. I'm not going to say that. So I, was, I just go up and I'm like, hey, guys, you know what they say about girls who smoke? And they're like, what? I'm like, uh, girls who smoke love Asian, tall, good-looking Asian guys with the camera. <laughs> and uh, open like a bomb, dude. Uh, it wasn't the same night. I got the, girls, I got the Asian girl's number, and it was like a week later before I went back to California. Um, another one was uh, a Mexican girl, the the one with the black girl who kept blocking me. She was like down. So um, another one was a house party. Another one was a uh, the Halloween party. So most of my most of my ladies have pretty much made a video about them. But uh, it's it's crazy. Like you really never know what's gonna happen until it happens. Uh, you know, so you, you just can't tell. Like, when you open a girl, when you open a set, like, you have no idea if they're going to respond, like, warmly or coldly. You just, I would have never known. Like, those girls that, like, were in, I, I can I would have never been able to predict it before I actually did the approach. Now, when obviously, when I approached and the response was, diff, um, you know, presented, then I kind of got a feeling of how it went. But before approaching, you never know how it's going to go. Uh, so, so yeah, um, that on top of, uh, DJ Fuji, uh, the guy that I work for, who's, uh, who's an instructor, um, I've gone to almost, like, ten mini boot camps with him, so almost every month I go out with him, uh, and he, he hooks me up with microphones, and he listens in, he's got his little, uh, uh, Android phone, and he's, like, typing all my notes, right, I'm, the girls don't know I'm, like, mic'd up. Actually, I have two mics, right? One for my infield videos, and the other one to his, like, wireless headset. So, like, I'll be doing my shit, and, and then, like, I'll be done, and he'll come back and be like, 
hey, what the fuck, man? You didn't lock in. Like, quit being a bitch. Or, um, hey, like, why did you skip this step? Like, when the girl says this, like, why did you not respond the shit test properly? So I was like, um, it was cool that he's like only one of the only coaches that actually plugs you in with the microphone and hears your conversation. Because when you do training with other guys, and they're fucking standing 20 feet away, they don't know what you're saying. I mean, they're just looking at your body language, like, what kind of feedback can they tell you, right? They can't say, oh, you know, you're not, um, what, what are your problems? Are you stuck with uh, teasing? Are you not Are you not qualifying the girl? Are you, uh, you know, are you being like the fun clown guy? Are you uh, stalling and you're like running out of things to say? Uh, yeah, if, if a pickup coach doesn't know what the hell you're saying, like, why are you paying them whatever three thousand, two, three thousand dollars for a boot camp, right? You could just go out with a buddy who's good and be like, hey, you're not smiling, or hey, you're leaning in. But yeah, so the fact that he was able to just like listen to all my interactions and break it down was uh, was huge for me. Uh, I'm gonna make another video. Alright, so this is part two of the video of my one year update. Uh, just jotted down some quick notes. So I was thinking of making part two and three, but I'm going to just try to put it all in uh, one video. So one of the things I got on my comments was uh, I want to address was the fact that I approached 2,000 sets and why I only got 12 lays. And, uh, you know, if you look at it in terms of numbers, it is pretty low, right? So it's like almost, I'm approaching over 100 sets before I get one lay. So it's like, holy shit, it's like 1%. How are you doing so bad? Um, so first of all, you know, when you get to, to intermediate level, a lot of it is logistics. Um, like, I live in a pretty small town. But it's close to San Diego, so every weekend I drive um, 70 miles to San Diego to game because number one, there's better looking chicks. Number two, it's just a better environment, there's better wings, uh, it's just better to game in San Diego. Um, but again, it's 70 miles from my place, so if I were to pull a girl fucking 70 miles, like, my game would have to be ridiculously tight, and that almost never happens because I live fucking 70 miles away. Um, but the other option is to pull to her place, um, which I've done it, but it's not a lot. Most of my lays have been day twos, and it's just, it's just, logistically, it's terrible. Like, if the girl lived, like, five minutes from my house, um, then it's easy, right? But if she lives, like, a fucking hour away it becomes, it just, it's just hard to coordinate, like, girls these days are really busy, I fucking work 40 hours with my normal job, but then I work 20 with, uh, kind of the internship I do with the, uh, uh, with the pickup coach, so, I mean, I'm pretty much book solid, and the only time I have for, like, day twos is, like, three hours on Thursday night, and fucking Sunday night. And I, you know, I go out Friday night and Saturday night. So if, like, it's just, it's just hard. I wish I could, like, quit my day job. If I quit my day job and I could just do pickup full time, if I just went out, like, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, did online game, fucking book dates from, you know, Sunday through Wednesday, it would be, like, a different story. Like, when I went to Seattle for my, um, for my, uh, fucking, which I'm about. when I went to Seattle for my holidays, um, I just hit up, uh, plenty of fish, and, uh, next day, I got a lay, so, it's just, uh, a lot of things can be challenging from a logistical point of view, but, um, you know, even if I didn't get 12 lays, I would have gladly done, like, those 2,000 sets, even if, like, I could have retained the skills that I'm at now, even if I didn't get the lay, like, it would have still been worth it. Um, what else? Oh, so just, again, it's it's not easy from, like, going to San Diego because a lot of the big clubs, people are going there to, it's 
they're very different from like dive bars or like Pacific Beach where it's just like one, you know, two or three girls and a couple guys go hang out. A lot of these big clubs, it's like birthday parties, it's like bachelorette parties, it's like this massive fucking group and sometimes it's just like really hard to isolate these girls. Um, uh, and that's always been a challenge. There's usually somebody in the in the group that's like watching over the rest of the people. Um, just like that video I just made right before this, the one um, when the girl was really into me, like about me smelling good with a cologne, and uh, even like verbally, like it, it would happen if like my hotel was like right across the block from there, I would have pulled definitely and even you know what uh, i think about it if i had just like walked her down from the second floor to the first floor i would have pulled so um so 12 lays i'm not i'm not upset about that at all i think it's it's way above average fucking tyler okay owen cook tyler durden the founder of rsd it took him 18 months to get his first lay 18 months that's a year and a half i'm definitely not complaining about 12 lays so that's, that's fine. Um, another topic I want to talk about is um, people want people always ask, you know, like pickup. Is it are you fundamentally changing or are you just putting up a front? And, you know, is this like are you changing at a core level? And um, and the answer is yes. Of course, I'm changing at a core level. Like right now, you know, I'm not I'm not in pickup mode all the time, right? When I go to work. When I um, go get a haircut, when I go, uh, you know, to like the supermarket, like I just subconsciously, because I'm so used to being more aware of myself, like I, I can see like people smiling at me more. Like I'll get better responses from people. It's easier for me to like, you know, get shit done. Like I, I've been pulled over by cops a couple of times and I've talked my way out of it. Uh, I notice people are smiling at me more. I know it's easier for me to, um, just the general vibe is much better. Like, I don't have to try. Like, back in the day, like, I'll see a coworker and I'll struggle to make, like, small talk. Right now, it's, like, easy. I can just fucking, uh, just ping a couple of random shit, get them laughing. It's just, like, it's, it's, re it's really, I'm not even thinking about it. Like, all these things are just coming out of my mouth naturally. So, uh, so yes, I am changing fundamentally, but of course, some things change slow and some things change fast, right? Some of my, like my outer game, a lot of it has changed, but you know, some of my inner game, uh, it's still there. You know, you've lived fucking 20 years of your life and you've always felt some, you know, felt this way or felt that way. It's not just going to go away, but it certainly, uh, eventually goes away right just like everything you were born with a blank slate um so everything that's that's you you learned it from somebody you learned it from a friend you learned it from you know your parents your coworkers, your mentor your teachers you're still learning it from somebody like you're always changing like what you are now isn't how you behaved in college and it isn't how you behaved in high school or elementary you're always shifting so just by doing it more and more that naturally becomes, you know, that be, that becomes you. Um, next thing I want to talk about is like where I'm at overall in the game, right? So if this is like, um, this hands better. So if this is like, you know, the very beginning, this is like your fucking guru status. I'm probably like over here. I'm, I'll say maybe a um, little bit less than half. I would say I'm at the intermediate stage. If this is like, um, if this is like, you know, you can barely approach, you're like, you're socially awkward, and this is like, man, you're you're pulling every other day. I'm like right here. Okay, so that's the intermediate stage, uh, and uh, so there's different challenges with what stages you're at, right? In the beginning stage, uh, it's like a lot of fear, you hate going out, it's like a dreadful feeling, and, uh, you know, going out sucks because you're getting rejected all the time, like, it's, it's like the battle of two pains, right, like, the pain of loneliness versus the pain of getting rejected, it's like, they both suck, right, you're going out because, you know, your fucking girlfriend cheated on you, or you can't get any girls and you're upset, but, 
and you keep going because knowing that like the 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 pain of being rejected over and over getting blown out um the you know you have to think long term so that that's the challenge of like the beginning phase well the intermediate phase is a different set of challenges and <laughs> you get lazy when you become at an intermediate level why because uh, you have girls to talk to you, uh, you're getting, you know, you, you have women around you, uh, but you're still going out, you're still trying to improve the game, right? But here's the deal, right? Like, let's say every Friday I go out, but like, I got a girl coming over on Thursday, it kind of kills your motivation, right? You, you, you just, you're not, you don't have that drive that you used to, like, you know, that loneliness that, you know, I'm going to get better at this, so there's that that initial drive. Well, at the intermediate, uh, that's where most people kind of cap out, is where, you know, hey, I'm getting dates here and there, I can get a girlfriend if I wanted to, um, you know, the girls are decent, like, they're, they're you know, they're, they're cute enough, right? But they're not, like, freaking Giselle Bunchen, or they're not, you know, they're not freaking Playboy Playmates hot, right? They're, like, seven, eights, you know, they're cute. So a lot of people get lazy, and that's where I'm at right now. I'm getting lazy, and I'm kind of just like, man, eh, like when I go to the club, I'll approach, but I'm not, I'm not like pushing as hard as I should, right? I'm not being risky. I'm not being ballsy enough. I'm not, because uh, that's really how you learn is you have to fail hard, like, like hard. Like the the harder you fail, the faster you grow. It's like, hey, you know what? You know, I'm talking to a girl, and it's getting kind of, you know, it's getting, you know, boring and boring, and it's kind of going downhill. A lot of times, you know, a normal person would just keep doing the same shit until, like, it slowly dies out, and then the girl just like, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom a minute. It's like a soft blowout, right? You get a lot of those. Most of your, most of the girls in the club aren't that mean that they'll tell you to, like, fuck off. It's usually like, oh, let's go grab a drink, um, bye, or... Uh, we're gonna go to the bathroom. Bye. So it's it's not a hard blowout, right? So a lot of guys in the intermediate stage, they kind of just do the same shit. You know, if the girl's like on, then obviously they take advantage of it. But if it's not on, then they're not they're not really pushing the boundaries, right? That's where I'm stuck. And for me to get from here to like advanced, I have to be constant. I have to like I can't just go out. Like if you're a complete newbie. Even if you didn't read any material, even if you just um, went out, you're going to get better, right? But uh, when you get to the intermediate stage, that's where you have to, uh, you got to up your game. You got to, you have to figure out where your sticking points are and you have to actively uh, work on it. Otherwise, you're just going to be the same guy. You've already hit a plateau, so that's not going to make you get any better. Um, that's that's exactly where I'm at, right? Like I'm tall, um, I'm funny, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty witty. Like I can banter, and you know, a percentage of the girls are into me, and I just take it all the way to the end, right? Well, what about a girl that's not into me? What about a girl that doesn't like Asians? Like, how am I going to get her to like me? It's it's a different story. Like for me, the girls that have gotten were already like kind of into me from the beginning. So it's like it's just happen to go all the way to the end. Well, for me to get to the uh, the final stage, I'm going to talk about what my sticking points are in a bit, but, uh, you know, there's a lot more work to be done. Um, what are what are the more higher level stuff? So, um, I think I fall in love with every girl. I don't know if I fall in love with, like, at a deep level, but, like, every girl that I've been with like I actually do like them like I call them all the time and I think I call them too much like I'm on the road a lot so uh, you know I call these girls but a lot of times it you know girls are just like guys sometimes they just they just want to have some fun and then they don't really care you know right? <laughs> like I've like fuck I've even had girls like that just like have told me like I'm not really into anything more and uh you know, don't want to talk to me afterwards, and it's like, it's cool, like, um, but yeah, a lot of girls, it's it's not like just because they 
been with you that they they all want a relationship. That's not true at all. Like most girls, um, don't give a shit, or you know, they're they're just in the moment sort of thing, right? Just like a guy, you 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 do a girl if she's mildly attractive, but that doesn't mean the next day you want her for a relationship. Well, same thing happens to girls, right? They could not even like you that much, but they're in the moment and you're there and you fulfilled her her needs and desires. So on the, on the next day, hey, the feeling isn't there anymore. So whatever, right? Um, and, you know, over the course of the year, I, I've seen a lot of, a lot of, uh, kind of just reality of what's out there, you know. Um, I used to have like a real, uh, like an idealistic uh, view of what a man and what a woman and what they should be in a relationship. Uh, you know, I thought cheating was just fucked up. Um, but now just seeing all, like the stuff that girls do, and it's not just girls, girls and guys. The girls, the, seeing what people do is just like, hey man, there's no rules, man. It's, it's freaking, it's free for all, dude. If, if you're, if you don't have the skills to keep your girl, then they, they're, you know, they're not objects. They can make their own decisions. They'll, they'll freaking cheat on you. Even, um, you know, like married woman, didn't care. I didn't, I was talking to that Brazilian girl. She was married. I didn't find out until an hour later, but like, I was like, you're married? Like, didn't matter to her. Uh, so I kind of see the world the way it is now, and it's just, it's not, it's not like, fucking rainbows and and skittles right it's 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 either be good at game be attractive be awesome or you know people are always self you know self-serving if if that girl can find a better option why is she going to stay with you right it, 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 girls do that all the time like one of my wings uh she, he met this girl that um had a boyfriend and was willing to dump uh her boyfriend if my friend would give her a place to stay so you know it's just like you see a lot of low shit but um and you know going out it just makes you it makes you more uh, aware of these things so when shit happens you're not you're not shaken by it you know you, you you've seen it happen like if let's say your girlfriend does something in the future that's messed up you you kind of take it as it is you know it's just like hey you know I'm not going to take this personally I've, I've seen this happen before Hey, it's the name of the game. This is life, you know. So that's that's one of the things I really like about going out is you be, have a thicker skin and um, you, you know you you don't get shaken as easily, right? Um, and the other dilemma is like you know my first girlfriend. I've I've been with her for uh, seven years and it's a long time. Um, and sometimes I wonder, like, do I really, she's a quality girl, but it's like, do I really love her because I truly love her or because, um, I loved her because, you know, that, that was my comfort zone. I, I didn't think I could do any better. And I spent so, so much time with her that it just kind of perpetuated itself. Like right now it's like, even though I like every girl I talk to, I, I feel myself almost like detached from the world right because when you go when you go open so many sets and you get blown out a girl saying uh, like fuck you i don't talk to this you know, blah 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 like you have to have like this stone cold uh skin and having that it makes you harder to connect with people like it makes it hard for you to connect with a girl at a very deep level because you know, you're so used to this um, this, this, you have to, it's, it's a self-protecting mechanism. You can't approach 2000 sets and getting so many blown outs without just creating this like icy shield. Right. So, but here's the thing, it goes away when you get really good, when you get really good, then your shield goes away. You kind of become vulnerable and, and you're able to connect with people better. Now, I can connect with people, but I'm not connecting with people at a fundamental, like a deep, deep level, right? Like these girls, I like them, but you know, I'm not going to marry them. They're not, um, you know, I see myself getting better and better. It's like, what's the point? Why am I going to get in a relationship when, you know, a month from now, I'm going to find somebody more attractive, somebody better, right? So I, I, um, 
I, I can't connect. So that's 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 one of the things that uh, when you're at an intermediate level, you're kind of you're at that phase, right? So, and another thing is when you have your when you have more and more options, uh, they did a study on this. Making a decision becomes really hard, right? If you had two, three, you know, three options: chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. You're not going to have any problems picking out what flavor of ice cream you like, right? But but you you go to like a store with like 200 ice cream flavors. You're staring at the menu. You're like, what the fuck, you know, what what am I going to pick? Like, is this one good? Well, what about this one? And you pick one. You're probably not happy with it because you're thinking, well, maybe this one tastes better. So when your options expand, not only is the decision making harder, but you're actually less satisfied with any particular decision. And that that's not just girls, that's like cheese, that could be like Italian, you know, type of salad dressing, just anything when your options get more. Picking, you know, like let's say you were to find a wife that you want to marry, picking one becomes really hard because because you only get to pick one, right? You have to make sure you have the right decision. But you have all these options, and you're like, well, what do I really like? What do I really like in women? Like, what are the qualities I really value the most? And and, and that becomes hard. So I don't think that's going to go away. You're really just going to have to. You get to one point at where you're where you're just satisfied with how good you are, and and you have to decide like, am I going to keep looking, keep getting better, but, you know, it, I think game levels off, right, I mean, you can only, you're not going to get to a point where it's like, bam, you know, like, Playboy Playmate, or, uh, you know, Victoria's Secret uh, model, you, you're going to taper off, and then finding, the the higher the quality of the woman, the, the uh, more scarce they are, that's just the, the natural bell curve, so if, um, you know, if you if you're not satisfied with a nine point eight, finding a nine point nine might be really fucking hard. Like when you make that decision to stop, and that's that's really your own personal decision. So I I don't know, you know, when I'm gonna be just like, hey, you know, this I'm I'm happy at this with this girl that I that I'm gonna get at my skill level, and I'm gonna move on to other areas of my development. Um, so that's kind of like a high level what I think about in the future. Uh, um, this the next part I want to talk about is like what I need to work on. That these are, um, you know, I can't just be good look. You know, I can't just be like tall, funny guy who knows how to escalate. I have to actually um, do some of these things that are very important. Like if you want to get good, good, uh, these things are like you can't skip it. Like you, I'm not saying you can't get laid without these. But to be solid, solid, like I think these are the things that I would have to work on. Okay, so number one is, um, well, this is more is for the for the club environment, but dance floor game is huge, right? Uh, I'm a terrible dancer. That's something I need to work on. But uh, a lot of times you go into a group of girls and they're dancing. You have to be able to match their energy level, right? Like if their energy level is here and they're just like kind of buzz and just having a great time you can't just be like just talking down here like even if your verbal is smooth like they can't hear shit and it's not gonna matter it doesn't matter how how tight your verbal is you have to be able to match their energy level and you know that's typically done by dancing so that's one thing I got to work on um, another thing I need to work on is teasing and back turn uh, natural guys do it all the time teasing creates a shit ton of attraction, all right, uh, and teasing disinterest, uh, but here's the thing, that teasing is something that is very hard to learn, because here's the deal, right, if you tease improperly, you're going to get yourself blown the fuck out, right, you, you talk to an Asian girl and you tease improperly, she's just going to take that as like an insult, right, it has to be like this playful tease, and it just it it just creates a ton of attraction. And the thing with learning teas is you have you have to not um, play safe. You you really have to just go all out. You have to try things. You have to hit the boundary, right? But what teasing is is really go to that boundary where that girl, not not to the point where she thinks you're an asshole, but like just step back a little bit. That creates a ton of attraction. You'll get her to like invest in you. And the other thing is like back turn, right? Uh, girls are like cats. If 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 you show disinterest, 
bull chase you, right? So a lot of times when you do a back turn, is like she's kind of into you, and then she says something stupid or says something that you don't like. You're just like, oh. like she'll, maybe she's talking about like going to law school, and I'm like, hey, what's your LSAT score? She's like, 155. I'm like, oh, that's terrible. I can't talk to you. Back turn. And I actually did that to a girl studying law school, and she, she she's like, no, 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 come back, like, oh, you're such an asshole, like, I can't believe you made fun of me, and then that one back turn alone was so powerful enough that, like, just, I, I just grabbed her hand, like, a couple seconds later, and went to the dance floor, and it was like, easy make out, so, um, disinterest, back turn, super important, but uh, most people don't do that, right, it isn't only a couple of naturals. Uh, the other thing is punishing bad behavior and rewarding good behavior. Um, I don't do that well enough, right? A lot of times a girl will be like bitchy just to test you and they'll just act. They just do it randomly. Like sometimes I'll be talking to a girl and it goes really well and then they throw this fucking curveball. It's like they'll just act bitchy randomly and, uh, you know, I kind of accept that behavior and, uh, <laughs> It kills it. It kills attraction, right? They know they can um, test your boundaries, and if your boundaries aren't solid, they'll lose respect for you. So that's another thing, and and that's that's hard to do, right? Um, you can um, I hang out with a, a black friend. He's just ruthless, right? Girls will when a girl is disrespectful, he'll he does not put up with that shit because deep down he he's really like in an abundance mindset right like this girl who was like being a dick she he just told her like get the fuck out of my car like it was in the middle of a highway he just didn't give a fuck um there's one time where he's a millionaire and he's he just he just like you know like girls don't really mean anything to them you know he's he's got everything in life it just doesn't matter right i mean he's dated models so one time these two girls went to his place and one was being disrespectful and uh you know, he offered her a drink, and then he didn't. She didn't drink the the whole thing, and she went around and grabbed a bunch of other drinks and opened it, and like she like turned on like random appliances and like the lights in the fucking house. It's a big ass house, right? It's like a mansion, and he's like, "What the fuck?" He just like goes outside, takes the water hose, all right, takes the water hose in and fucking sprays the girl, right? Um, that's one icy motherfucker, right? I, I can't I can't picture myself doing that, and maybe that's a little too harsh, but you got to have strong boundaries. You, you can't put up with that shit, right? And it's just, um, I'm still in that chase mode, right? Like a girl's like walking away. I'm like, no, come back, right? No, you know, where are you going? Like if a girl like hangs up on me, it's like, uh, and... And, you know, that could be addressed two ways, right? If you're fundamentally at your core know you're attractive and um, you, you have that abundance mindset, it'll fix itself. But again, you know, that, that core is takes a while to change, right? I'm still in the mode of chasing girls. Like, every time I go out, it's like I'm chasing them, right? So that, that shift is going to take some time, right? That's like what you want to be at a fundamental level. But... Even though you get that feeling of wanting to chase, you know, like the girls like walking away or they say something stupid and they like, you know, they, they, they don't, they ignore you. You can have that feeling, but short term is you want to, uh, you want to uh, pick up that, you want to realize that, hey, I'm feeling this, I'm trying to chase, but I got to catch myself, I got to stop, right? I, I can't, um, so it's almost like you're... Uh, you're consciously forcing yourself to um, to not chase and not to put up with bad behavior, and you know that that's something that um, you'd have to do in the short term until eventually you get that at your core level, and that's that's something that's um, very important. That's that's one of the things I'm working on. The other thing is like a range of emotions, like uh, just. Being, I don't say that being Asian, but like, you know, I never really practice like my full range of emotions. Like, I'm always like monotone, or I'm like happy and fucking joking around. Like, I, you know, girls respond like you want to bring them into like a roller coaster of up and down emotions. You got to be a dick to them. You got to be nice to them. You got to, you know, show different 
different ranges of emotions that, you know, it's like a roller coaster. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking an acting class, which uh, you're, you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're like, you know, sad, you know, like scared or like contempt, like uh, who the fuck is this girl, right? Or like um, fear, fear is like, you know, so just, just being more cognizant of your facial expressions, being more animated, having a more, more wider range of emotions, really important. And the other thing is just qualification, right? Qualification is more, what are you looking for in a girl, right? You're screening the girl, you're looking at them, and um, you're trying to find out the qualities of a girl besides her looks. This is obvious, like, looks is given, given that it's, it's important, but, like, besides her looks, what are the qualities you're looking for in a girl, right? So when you work on qualification, not only are you able to get that out of the girl, right? You're trying to find out what they're all about. Right. This is when you're getting to a level where you're starting to select, right? When you're early on in your game, you can't be picky, right? If you're a virgin and some fat girl wants to fuck you, you better take that opportunity because let's say that opportunity happens once in a year and you don't take that opportunity, how do you think you're going to get good, good enough to um, get that HB 9 or 10? You, you're not going to get you're not going to get any um at that rate, it's never gonna happen. You can't be that picky. You know that that's one. And that, uh, I always see that with newbies is like, oh, I have standards. Like I would, I, you know, I would never talk to that girl. It's like, bitch, you you're a virgin. Like, who are you to sit? You know what I mean? It's like, dude, don't take up. You know, don't miss those opportunities, and you know, get some experience so you're you're not you know what you know you don't look like a fucking creeper. You know, get some experience under your belt. You know, there's no, there's no ego tied to that, you know, just, just enjoy the moment and, um, you know, don't be so damn picky. Uh, that's how you get good. Uh, anyways, but once you do get to a point where you have more options and you're the selector, then you want to start screening for like the qualities that you care about. Uh, so not only qualification is important because you're trying to figure out what you like, but, um, you know, having good qualification, it really hits the girls hard, right? Like you, you're, you know, you're at the rapport stage and you're, you're building comfort with a girl and you're asking her a lot of questions, not directly. Like, so you're trying to get her to answer questions, uh, implicitly. Like, so let's say, uh, you like a girl who's well-traveled and you ask her where she's been, like, where the cool places she's uh, she's seen, and she tells you like she went to Brazil, and blah blah blah, and then and then you qualify the girl, and you're like, you know, uh, you know, I find that a girl who's well traveled is very attractive. You know, it makes them uh, understand the culture of different places better. They have a more broader perspective of the world. They're more, you know, they're more likely to be understanding. They have more of an open mind. Um, so no guy does that. No guy qualifies. Uh, a girl at a club or whatever they meet. Um, so when you qualify a girl, she she knows that you actually like her for just besides sex. Right? It's it's just like whoa, this guy. You know, I have this quality about me. And they feel good too. It's like hey, I have this quality about me that this guy really likes. I feel this connection with this guy. Right. So that's really important. The qualification. So uh, that's kind of that's kind of my update. And uh, sorry, it took like fucking thirty minutes, but. Um, uh, I didn't, I didn't really, uh, I just kind of free flowed out of my head what all the thoughts were. Uh, yeah, leave a comment below. Uh, if you like it, subscribe. Um, I'm thinking of maybe getting some actual footages, but, uh, I actually need a wing that can work a fucking camera. Like, my wing right now is, even though he's an engineer, he can't, uh, he doesn't know how to use a camera worth a damn, so, uh, That'll be later, I guess.